received a phone message from uh, Chief Zipperman, the school uh, uh, police, uh, and he uh, shared with me uh, the threat that had been made to not one school, but many schools uh, in this school district. Some of the details talked about uh, backpacks, uh, talked about uh, other packages, uh, and uh, after uh, talking with him, uh, also with the board president, uh, I made a decision to close all of the schools. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's, uh, of course, the uh, school superintendent in Los Angeles. Uh, there was a threat received, and none of the kids in L.A. went to school today because of a threat. Now, how, how justified was he in closing the schools? Well, it turns out New York City schools got a very similar threat, if not exactly the same threat, and New York City Police Commissioner Bratton weighed in on that. The email that was received in New York City, which is uh, similar and almost exactly the same as received in other locales, specifically Los Angeles, that uh, we do not see that as a credible terrorist threat. It appears as of this time that the school system out there acted on their own without consultation with local law enforcement authorities. We do believe, uh, a preliminary investigation, that this is in fact a, a hoax and uh, we'll investigate it as. All right, he also said that they overreacted in Los Angeles. Joining us now is Rick Unger, senior political contributor for Forbes.com and co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM, and Dennis Michael Lynch, host of Unfiltered, which premieres in January right here on Newsmax TV, documentary filmmaker and conservative commentator. Welcome to, uh, to both of you, and uh, Dennis, congratulations on the show. Let's, uh, let's talk about this, uh, Dennis, uh, the... Um, the the fact that Los Angeles reacted the way they did to a, an unsubstantiated email, which, again, here in New York, they thought right away was a hoax. Steve, that's the world we now live in. And you can attribute this, as far as I'm concerned, to President Obama. Because not only has he allowed terrorism and ISIS to metastasize, he's allowed it to create itself into a brand. And that brand is that of fear. And fear is running through this country like a river flows. And so what, what is that uh, guy in, in California other than needing a new suit? I mean, what is his choice? Uh, if he doesn't close down the schools and God forbid something does take place, he will forever be hung on a flagpole because he didn't protect his children. So uh, we are in a situation where I blame all of this on President Obama. Rick? What a shock. Uh, yes, it's all President Obama's fault. How, you got to wonder why uh, Bill Bratton here in New York wasn't uh, as concerned. Apparently, you can't blame President Obama for New York today because you have one of the top police chiefs in the country reaching a very different conclusion. I think that not only did Los Angeles probably jump the gun, I will leave room for the fact that there could be things we don't know, but sadly, and this is very sad, because of that decision, there was a 14-year-old boy who actually was leaving school school when they were told to leave, he walked across the street and was killed. Oh, that could have so, happened on any day. Could have, Stop except it. he would have been Stop in class. So that, is such a liberal really, uh, that is such a liberal remark. Uh, you, you have to tell you know, it's parents. such a liberal remark. And Bratton's sitting next to the biggest liberal there is in the country, next to Obama, to with his progressive mayor of New York. He's a disaster as well. I suspect the young man's parents might disagree with all right, him. Well, that, I, that I could happen that, on that, any that, day. That's a red herring. I don't think that enters exactly. into this at all. And, and you know, but here's the deal. If they, uh, if they start sending emails from Pakistan or Germany or wherever this email came from uh, saying, uh, guess what, tomorrow night's Knicks game or, to, or the Super Bowl or whatever, I mean, are we going to just start, can start canceling events, uh, Michael? Steve. Dennis, I'm sorry. Uh, Dennis, Michael, call me, <laughs> <laughs> call me, any, call call me anything but Rick. Else? Just can don't call, call me Rick. If you call me Rick, I quit, all right? No, this will be the shortest that. show of we the history. We don't want that. Steve, I mean, uh, let, let me put it back on you, Steve, because I know that you're a, you're a big, uh, what, you're a big Knicks fan, are you not? Uh, no, I root for the Nets. Oh, same thing. All right, so, so let me ask you a question. Would you want to know if there was a threat to the Coliseum before it is that you are entering into a game? Uh, sure. Okay, that's my answer. Yeah, but as a parent, I want to know if there's any threat whatsoever posed to the school districts. But to pick up on Steve's point, then you know anybody. And by the way, that note could it may have bounced through Germany. We don't really know. It could have come from anywhere. But it's exactly right. Steve's making a great point. How often do I get to say that? Never. You'll have you'll have hoaxers out there galore putting in threats for everything via the email. We'll come to a total standstill. We've got to stop being so afraid. No, 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 no. You no, can no, crawl no. under your bed if you. 
you why want to are you know I'll, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what you're not privy to what you're not privy to that this kind of thing happens every single day across America yeah. we are getting threats every single day we've been getting them Half for years. years ever since 9 11 all right so what's happening is that these threats are now being taken as serious because of the way that ISIS and terrorism has metastasized. Right. For you to ignore that is just right, foolish. Right, let, let's move on. Terrorism to was around long before ISIS. I'm sure this is going to come up in tonight's debate. we got about a minute and a half left. Uh, Rick, uh, what are you looking for? Is it going to be uh, all hands on deck against Donald Trump from the moderators and the questioners to the candidates? I Listen, my guess is this is the night Ted Cruz uh, shines. He, he comes through. He will be standing next to Trump. I think you'll see Trump uh, start to take some pretty big swings at him. I think he's too clever. I know Dennis agrees with this to take the bait. You know, I may not be a Cruz fan, but I am awfully, awfully impressed by the way he's handled this campaign. I think you're going to see him really uh, putting on a show tonight. Dennis? I think you're going to see Trump go from 41 percent to over 50 percent. I think that uh, it, it's time for some of these other guys in the GOP to just fall off and let Rubio, Cruz, Trump really take center stage so this way Trump can shine because I do think he's going to wind up being the nominee. They're not going to fall off when we haven't even seen one vote cast yet. Well, it's going to be very interesting. I, I'd like to see uh, Kasich and Christie and uh, Fiorina and uh, I'm probably leaving some out. Uh, Paul and the others just get, just get out already. And, and let's see what happens where the votes right, fall. There's some votes. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ed, we appreciate it. Dennis Michael Lynch and Rick Unger. Up next, CNBC senior contributor Larry Kudlow will be here. And Larry has had a change of heart on this whole immigration situation. He'll tell us about it when we continue. Don't go away.